so Steve and I, so Steve and I get married, we're newly married, super stressful. I'm commuting in graduate school. He's in his, he's in medical school. We're broke, you know, it's just hard times. And then I wake up our first, my first birthday after our, our wedding. And I come downstairs and we're in this little two, like little upstairs, downstairs, tiny apartment. And I look around and there's jack shit, no balloons, no signs like and i grew up in a house where you kind of decorated for the birthday and i was like this is it this is just the uh, one thing in a long list of things it's not working and i told my therapist i said you know this is this is not going to work and i need to think of a way to this is before gwyneth paltrow had introduced the idea of consciously uncouple but i was like i need to do whatever the 1990s version of that is i, I need to get out of this marriage it's not going to work and she said did you ask him for what he what you wanted did you ask him for what you needed did you tell him what a what a birthday celebration would look like for you and i said the word spoken by millions of people every day if i need to ask you it's not worth it and she looked at me and she said well maybe if you're afraid to ask him you don't think you're worth it oh yeah that is a tough one i've i i know that feeling that is a tough one because then you go yeah yeah i i, I don't i mean for me personally i that's always my conclusion oh i know i don't feel i deserve it yes how embarrassing to say, hey, listen, my birthday's next week. And in my family, this is what we did. And it would mean a whole lot to me if downstairs was decorated and just had a couple <laughs> balloons and made some sign. Oh my God, I'd rather, I'd rather die and get a divorce than, <laughs> than be that vulnerable about, like, I, like, like I'm, do you see me? This is, this is the forehead rub. And this is like clinicians, therapists will tell you that this is such a tell. This is like a stress tell. Um, but can you imagine, Aww. hey Fern, next week's my birthday and as my friend, it would mean a yeah. lot to me. Just make it amazing and I'll feel fine. <laughs> God, oh, it's hard, so right? Brilliant. It's hard, it's really hard. All of it, communicating is really hard. Like I'm a communicator for a living and I find it excruciating in my real life. You know, I like doing this. This is, I feel in control, that's probably why. But in everyday situations, even with my family, I find it really hard because it's a vulnerable place to be to say what you want, to say what you need, um, without then probably going into shame, thinking, am I an asshole for asking for this, yeah. for that, you know? Yeah. It's so hard. It's so bloody hard. Um, <laughs> it's bloody hard. It is yeah, bloody it's, hard. it's vulnerable. I mean, there's so many bloody hard things about living in the modern world. You know, one of the things we have to touch on is overwhelm, which who isn't <sighs> feeling overwhelmed? I'm sure every person listening to this now will go, me, I'm overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed. And, and you put this quote in the book from John Kabat-Zinn, um, who, who said, sums it up perfectly. It's all unfolding faster than my nervous system and psyche can manage it. That is it. You know, that is how so many of us feel like it's a runaway train. And like we've discussed a lot today, we can't control what's going on out here. The outside world, we cannot control it. So what tools do you have in place for you to manage how you react to that if you are in an overwhelm so like you when i was when i was researching the book i was like oh my god i don't i i didn't i didn't know this word existed or i didn't know i think i've been using these wrong so one of the things i learned about overwhelm and stress i learned the difference when i was writing this book from the researchers who studied these constructs so stress I make an analogy in the because in, I waited tables for a long time through college and under and graduate school. So stress is like when you're waiting tables, it's like being in the weeds. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. I can manage it, but I'm walking through some th some thick weeds right now. Overwhelm is the John Cabot Zinn quote. Like I actually am no longer functioning productively. I, it, it's too much now. Like my over, my, my nervous system is just completely overrun. So before I did this research, I used to say I'm overwhelmed a lot. And this is the thing that just was like, oof, like mind blowing to me around this research. Language 
does not just communicate emotion. Language shapes and changes what we're feeling. So the best way I can describe this, and this is the neurobiology of emotion research, that neurologists study and psychology people study, is what if you wanted to make a, some chocolate, homemade chocolate chip cookies for your kids? And you got out your bowl, you put your flour and your milk and your everything in, but the bowl that you used changed the flavor of the cookie. The bowl was an active ingredient of the cookie. Language is an active ingredient of our emotion. When I say I'm overwhelmed, when I use that language to label it, my neurology, my biology starts to say, shut down, we're done, shut down. When I say I'm stressed, it says, God, the weeds are thick. I'm managing through it, but it's, I, it's, it's becoming tough, but it's manageable. Yeah. So I think one of the things that I have really changed, I and mean, there's a, there's a number of things that have radically kind of changed the way I live from the book, but one of them is, I'm very careful now about how I use the word overwhelmed. And if I am truly overwhelmed, there's only one neurobiological antidote to it, which is nothingness for 10 or 15 minutes. So at work, I'm right now in my podcast studio in Houston. So right now, if I said, shit, I'm overwhelmed. Wait, are you really overwhelmed or are you just kind of stressed? No, no, no. I'm overwhelmed. As soon as we hung up, I would take off my ear pods, my ear pods, and I would go for a walk in the parking lot for 10 or 15 minutes. If I'm stressed, I just keep doing my work, but stay mindful about how much more I can take on before it leads to overwhelm. So, man, I, I, I just, I knew language was important. To be honest with you, I knew, I knew it was a big thing. I did not know it was the bowl that could change the cookie. It's so interesting because almost in, in that example, by using the word overwhelm, <clears throat> you've made a little sacred commitment to yourself that that equals some sort of action and remedy because you're choosing a moment of compassion if you use the word overwhelm. Whereas if you use That's the word right. stress, you can, you can carry on. And you know, I'm a, a huge language lover and, a, and an avid reader and write books myself. And I love the English language more than anything. And I'm nervous to ask you this question. Maybe it's even foolish, but hey, I can be vulnerable in this space because that's what you do. And I also <laughs> like doing the same thing. Yeah. Can you ever overanalyze this stuff or is it always good to dig around in it? I think the answer goes back to, it's like when we were talking about expectations and disappointment. I think it's about self-awareness and intention. Are you, I think you can overanalyze anything because I think sometimes the intention of over analysis is armor. I'm going to study this shit so hard. I don't have to do it. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to, instead of actually feeling pain, I'm going to overanalyze the data on whether this is true or not. And then I'm going to argue with you about the data set and the meta analysis. You know, like, yeah, I think it depends. I think you can do almost anything as armor. Mm. So it's how you use the information and the knowledge that you have. <clears throat> you can yeah. use it for yourself or against yourself, I guess. That's it. I mean, because the thing is, if you're like, well, but the etymology of the word stress. <laughs> and then you're like, you know, yeah, shut up. You've gone down a rabbit hole that has no end. And you're and you're intellectualizing instead of feeling. Well, this goes back to what I said at the start. This is why I love what you do, because it's both. And it's not one overriding the other. You you add the humanness, you add the anecdotes, and you tell us how you're feeling with all of this data. And it's so helpful. And, you know, 
I don't even know how aware you are of how much you are helping people. Like it's game changing. I, again, I think when you're in a, not a good headspace, which I wasn't a, a long time ago. And I, I read a, a lot of your books during that time and it was game changing, you know, feeling, especially talking about shame because no one was really doing it in that way, in a really human way. And, um, and, and shifting that no, we, none of us need to carry shame around. No, and no. that's the kind of myth, isn't it? Cause it's so secret. We've all got these secrets in the shadow that we're trying to hide and none of us need to lug that around. And, and, and that's, that is liberating for people. It's so, I mean, it's liberating for me hugely. And, you know, I still sometimes sink into it with historic situations and new ones. But like you said, the whole point of this book, at least we now have the language to, to look at it and to poke around and to understand it and go, okay, I know what I'm doing here. This is what I normally do in this situation. Or, you know, I have a propensity to sink into shame. That's where we're at. And again, liberating, liberating, liberating. It's a beautiful map that you've created for all of us, and I'm eternally grateful for it. Another brilliant book for my Brené Brown collection that I have on my shelves right here. And I'm beyond glad I got to talk to you. To be honest, I could talk for another four or five happy hours. I have 8,000 questions, but you're <laughs> extremely busy. And I'm just so happy that this moment happened, that we got you on the podcast. Um, you know, a real, a real cool moment for me. So thank you so much. Oh God, for me too. And I would love to do it anytime. It's so fun.